हेलो ya lu oke okay. kelihatan nggak mas uh, bentar. bentar oke okay. kelihatan oh, kelihatan ya oke okay. tulisannya apa gambar berantakan kalau di saya ya tulisan partisipannya kebelah belah gitu ya kebelah oh, iya sebenarnya ya, aku foto di whatsapp ya uh. apa emang kayak begini? gue nggak ngerti. <laughs> oh. aku udah gini lah kemarin kan mikir. ya mas. tapi di sini sih tampilan dari tempat uh, tempatnya Mas Adi normal jadi nggak apa-apa sih untuk sementara ini saya juga nggak tahu itu kalau gitu kenapa bahasa pengantarnya Indonesia atau Inggris Inggris mas oh Inggris aja oke okay. uh, pas nanti sudah mulai bahasa Inggris oke okay. mulainya berarti jam 2 pas ya mm-hmm. oke okay. ini aku selalu baru pertama kali nih sorry pakai webex training nih ya nggak apa-apa uh, yang yang perlu aku apa namanya perhatiin tuh apa aja ya Kalau nanti ada PPT yang ingin ditampilkan atau tidak? Oh boleh, tapi PPT aja dikit uh, aja sih. Dikit, oke. Okay. Ada. Lebihnya praktek kan ya? Kodi. Ya, lebihnya praktek. Ha, kodi. Jadi nanti bisa share. Jadi di Webex ada fasilitas untuk share desktop gitu. Oh, jadi gitu, menu- ya. menunjukkan apa yang ada di layar komputer. Desktop, oh, oke. Okay. Ketika jadi presenter, eh, sekarang uh-huh. aja dicoba kali ya. Oh, bisa boleh, jadikan boleh. Mas Adi jadi presenter. Oke, okay, oh iya. <coughs> di situ ada pilihan untuk share application. My desktop ya. Oh, share. application. Oke. Okay. Share desktop aja. Oh, share desktop aja ya, berarti mm-hmm. ya. Share my desktop. Oke. Okay. Oh, ini kelihatan nih, berarti ya. Kelihatan. Basic scripting okay, in gitu ya. Oke. Okay. Gitu. Terus kalau misalnya saya mau ngebuka desktop saya, berarti sus di mana nih? Eh, ngebuka desktop? Uh, uh, saya kontak call says kalau kayak gini hilang nggak? hilang oh hilang tapi nggak nggak kelihatan desktop saya kayak gimana nggak extended oh, gitu. ya nggak tahu oh, nggak oh. <laughs> tulisannya oh kelihatan kelihatan oh kelihatan itu nah. tadi sih ada background sinta vr gitu oh gitu oh, berarti kelihatan backgroundnya ya <laughs> oke okay. oke okay. ya udah berarti kayak biasa ya selanjutnya ya ini aku yuk mm-hmm. kayak ngebuka unity hub kelihatan ya mm-hmm. Oh gitu, oke okay deh, siap. Ini berarti nanti dua jam ya? Maksimal dua jam. Kalau Maksimal selesai kurang dari dua jam, nggak apa-apa. Uh-huh. apa-apa. Mungkin setengah jamnya buat tanya jawab. Tanya jawab, oke. Okay. Terus nanti untuk um, istilahnya gimana ya? Metode metode interaktifnya itu gimana? Dia emang biasa tanya jawab di akhir atau boleh di setengah-tengah? Tanya jawab pasti? di akhir aja mas. Oh, gitu. oh, ter- saya menyesuaikan dengan yang ngajar sih Sufi. Oh, Jadi biasanya kalau, ikutin. Oh, biasanya okay. ikuti, biasanya sih di akhir. Cuma kalau hmm. ada keinginan per apa, biasanya kan ada ada penjelasan yang bisa diselingi dengan diselingi, pertanyaan. Ya. Oke. Okay. Mungkin nanti kalau belakang belakangan mungkin terlalu jauh atau gimana ya silakan. Oh gitu, ya udah, oke okay, itu sip. Fleksibel kita. Gitu. Oke okay, deh. Nih pesertanya kebanyakan berarti dari luar atau gimana? banyak kan dari Indonesia tapi oh, ada gitu. juga yang dari luar oh gitu makanya gitu. pengantar bahasa Inggris mm-hmm. kalangan mana mas mahasiswa atau pekerja SMK oh SMK uh, uh. SMK luar negeri SM- juga SMK SMK, SMK. SMK. Ya. Hmm. Ya, senior high school lah berarti tapi udah punya ini ya udah punya udah udah, udah pada install Unity ya kayaknya semoga oh belum belum tentu mereka punya berarti ya iya yeah. belum tentu oh, mereka sudah melakukan nah, sekarang. Nah, oh gitu. Ya. Yang jelas nanti tugas akhirnya harus bikin VR. Hmm, ini berarti masih punya waktu 10 menit ya? Ayo lagi. Iya. Masih. Ini udah udah pada masuk atau gimana? Udah udah pada masuk. Ada lima belas tiga belas. Ini kalau saya mau balik lagi ke tadi tuh stop sharing berarti ya? Iya. Sharing, mau balik lagi ke sini. Oke. 
kita juga ada kolom chat biasanya kalau ada pertanyaan diketikin ke diketikkan di kolom chat baru dibaca hmm. terus dijawab langsung sih kalau oh, iya ini berarti kan chat yang ada di pojok bawah kanan nih mas nah, jadi kalau misalnya saya share my desktop itu gimana tuh kan nggak kelihatan chatnya chatnya ada di ada di tampilan di atas jadi di, di kan di navigasi ya. uh-huh. itu kan ada navigasi oh, iya, di atas iya, iya, iya. ada oh, chat iya, iya. kan iya. oke oke oh, kalau saya lebih enak pakai saya ketik S boleh ya nggak boleh nggak boleh <laughs> boleh tes oh, masuk ya berarti ya ah, tapi itu ke ini saya saja ke itu bisa diatur penerimanya ke oh, semua all participant ya all participant saya oh gitu tapi ntar all participant pasti masuk ke sini hmm, masuk ke okay. semuanya kalau kalau yang tulisan tes tadi semua masuk ke saya aja oke okay. oh iya bagus ya di WhatsApp mah <laughs> kalau di saya berantakan hmm. oh ini sudah mulai pakai Unity <laughs> Wah, siapa tuh yang ngomong mas? Hmm, yang ngomong nggak tahu tadi sudah saya ingat. Oh bukan peserta. <laughs> peserta peserta. Oh peserta. Peserta. Okay. Tapi kita ngomong kayak gini mereka juga udah masuk kan? Sudah udah sudah. 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 Oh, Oke. Okay. Halo halo. Berarti tinggal nungguin aja ya. Mm-mm. Ah, headset itu loh. Ya, langsung headset. Yo, Unity. I can't do that. 
Bisa dimulai sekarang, Mas? Oke, okay, bentar ya. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, ya. Oke, okay, udah siap, Oke. Okay. Okay, let us start. So, welcome here again, guys, with our fourth sessions in our virtual reality competitions um, video conference. So, today we gonna learn about a basic script scripting in Unity at first. <clears throat> And Actually, like usual, we will have like for about two hours this sessions, and we are recording this session. So, if you are getting left behind or you get um, internet connection lost, you can um, access our recording session that will be shared by Purnomo or Simeo admin team in tomorrow or. Yes, as soon as possible, <clears throat> or you can access it to the Simio website. And as usual, if you have any questions, letter you can type into the chat column, and maybe I will read it out for you, and one of us can answer it. And for today, uh, tutorial we have Mr. Adit. So. Yes, Mr. Rajit, time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Aji. Uh, well, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to Basic Scripting in Unity Training 101 with me, Aditya Pratama from Sinta VR. Okay, let's get started. First thing first, uh, let's have some little bit introduction, shall we? My name is Anjar Aditya Pratama. <coughs> Sebentar, oh ya, yeah. oke, okay. oh, second. Oke, okay. oke, okay. my bad, sorry. It's okay. Uh, oke, okay, let's continue. My name is Anjara Ditya Pratama, and maybe if my voice is too loud or too quiet, you can type in into the the uh, type box, chat box. So, my name is Sanjara Ditya Pratama, and I am a Unity Certified Developer from Singapore 2017. And right now, I am a Lead VR Developer at Sinta VR, and I am also an Indonesian Virtual Reality Association Research and Development Team. You can contact me on email at aditya.pratama2910 at gmail.com, and or can, you can share or maybe visit my LinkedIn at the link above all right guys so the today's agenda is or uh, something like this we have some several topics that we need to cover first one is ide or in our visual studio introduction we have variable functions syntax if statement loop scope and access modifier start and update awake and fix update and enable and disable component Uh, the total duration is around 115 minutes or roughly two hours so and if just like Aji said before if you have some question please type in on the chat box so I will see that it or maybe wait for until the end of the session so the prerequisite prerequisite for this one this training basic scripting in unity Uh, the software that we need to use or we will use is Unity 2017 to 2018. Uh, the latest one is okay, but if you can, if you already installed the 2017 or any other version, it is okay. And then the next one is Visual Studio Community. It is available within Unity installation. And for the skills, that it is nice if you guys have a uh, prior Unity interface scale if you have maybe open unity uh, maybe one or two times and it is also good to have if you have some basic c-sharp 
uh, programming language, but it is not uh, mandatory. Uh, we will cover all of the uh, basics from from basic uh, today. So, uh, Unity. Unity is a game of uh, Unity is game engine. One of the game engine that we can so uh, we can create a game on it and. Right now, it's expanding that VR, AR, and any technologies can be built onto on top of Unity. Uh, from further uh, further to do, and let's dive in into the Unity. If you guys already installed Unity, we, you, uh, we can follow along. And for those who does uh, don't install it yet, you can. Maybe watch uh, this uh, this training first, and maybe you can open or install Unity for yourself uh, after this. So, after we install Unity Hub, this is the main interface that you can see on top on of your screen. And for creating the project, first thing first, we need to create a project using new button on here, and we can name the, our projects any thing that you want. For today's purpose, maybe just create a project, maybe mm, our first project. And we can create project now and let the Unity take rest for us creating the project. Let me see. Yeah, once again, if you have some question, uh, you can type to the chat box so I can see all of your chat and maybe in some place I can reply as soon as possible. So, uh, this is the main interface of the Unity. The first one that we need to discuss or, uh, or we need to do is to create a script itself. So, if you are using the Unity 2018, there is two folder in here on below of the screen, asset and package. And if you use the other version, maybe it's similar without the package folder, it is okay. Uh, the first thing you need to create is you need to right click and create C sharp script. And you can type maybe uh, learn. And you can open this script by double click on it. Okay, the first topic that we need to discover or we, uh, we need to learn about is uh, IDE or Integrated Development Environment Visual Studio. This is a Visual Studio. Actually, this is uh, just like uh, Microsoft Word or Notepad for typing, but this software is specialized to help us as a game developer or programmer to create a script for our games. This is uh, the main uh, the main view of the uh, Visual Studio. You can see uh, we already have some lines on it, that, uh, such as using system the collection blah 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 and public class and something like this. And this is like a template that Visual Studio give to us as a starting point. Uh, for now, uh, if you guys following along, you can start to maybe typing some random stuff on it and get to uh, 
know about Visual Studio and what is this piece of software do. So if you type in something like this on this Visual Studio, it is just like Notepad or maybe Microsoft Word. We can create or we can make our script on it. So the first thing that we need to learn, let's come back to PowerPoint, shall we? We will try to learn the basic scripting of Unity. And the first thing that we need to know about is variables. Let's get back to the Visual Studio. So uh, before we jump into variable, uh, I, would, I would like to explain to you guys that what is this kind of line all about. So in programming language, uh, there are, there are several parts or body of this script or this line of code. So the first three line you see in on here, it's we can ignore that for now and we need to focus on that one line that I uh, highlight for you. This one is called a class. Uh, you can we, we will learn about that later on maybe the next uh, uh, the next uh, session. But uh, I want you to focus about this is what we will expand or what will be created on from now on. So the variable is uh, something that like a bucket. If you want to, for example, store, maybe you're, you have an apple and you want to store the apple somewhere safe, the variable is something like that. So. There is some type, uh, some many. There is many, many type of variable. But for example, if you want to store uh, a number, for example, we can define it as an integer. Integer or the short term is int is like a variable for storing the number. So if you want to, for example, uh, what can I? Uh, let's say maybe uh, age. Yeah. If you want to store someone age, you can put this one of variable to define it like int age. In here, this line, we already have, we already create the bucket for our age. So uh, in, in some somewhere else on our code, we want to define what kind, uh, how, how much of how much <laughs> how old are, are, are us maybe the age we can define something like this h equals 17 h equals 17 so this variable will contain a number a whole number from negative to positive and we can store any number that we like for example if we add again h to 25 it is okay for the script to store the 25 to variable age because this variable containing the int. For today, I would like to give you some example of our type of, of variable. One of them is integer. The next one is string. Sorry. The third one is boolean. And the next one is float. This is the basic of variable type that we need to learn first. If the int is to store the variable type of number, a whole number, the string is to, to store a line of string, or you can say a word. So if you say name, name is piece of string, right? your name, my name, for example, is a piece of string that we need to store the variable type of string if you want to store your name. A boolean or bool is a variable type containing only true or false. So if you may, for example, is already, is already married, there is only two types right, of marriage status. Uh, already married or still not married yet. 
So if you have some variable that we need to define true or false, we use variable type of Boolean. And the next one is float. Float is just like an integer, but it's uh, it's can, uh, we can contain any whole number with more precise, or you can say uh, well, with comma on it. For example, maybe you can say like hmm, what number? Or for example, like a price, maybe like. Apple price or from the supermarket. So if we can define an age, it can store a variable, a whole number, for example, like 17, and a string can contain uh, a string data, for example, a name for me, just like Adit. And is already married, you can fill the variable you see true or false from my perspective i already getting married <laughs> so i can type in true or maybe if you guys is not already married, married yet you can type it false it's okay it's just true or false and apple price you can type just like age you can type maybe uh, one dollar but if the price is 1.5 you can type it also like 1.f float f is for acronym of float so we need to define the f after the number the difference for float and in integer is if we define for example apple price in integer variable we got an error they integer cannot have a float or a comma on it there is an error cannot implicit, implicitly convert the type float to integer so an integer variable only can, can only contain a whole number okay we will uh, as we follow the this course uh, we will we will stumble upon that many variable and many type of other variable beside integer, string, boolean, and float. And we will talk about that later on on this course. Okay? And then the next part is a function. Function in programming is like, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, the name itself explained that a function. It's make uh, some procedural step by step that we need to do. For example, like in real world, maybe if you want to create a ramen noodle or maybe uh, create a fried rice or some other dishes, you have step by step uh, to create that kind of dish. For example, if you want to boil an, uh, a water, for example, a simple one, you need to fill out the kettle with the water and then we, uh, you need to turn on the, uh, the stove and then you, uh, you, you can boil the water after that. That step by step is uh, a method looks like in our programming language or in our game. So method, uh, method or function is, uh, uh, is this, that step by step, uh, pro, uh, step by step like that. When we first create the script, let, uh, let us create another script, for example. We can create another script in Unity by pressing right click, create and C sharp script. Let's say this one is learning function. If we open the script, the Unity already create a two default uh, function or method you can say for us this one void start and void updates this is a special method for from unity that we can use immediately into our games or our virtual application 
that requires us to fill the body of the function. The start function will be called the uh, will be called after we create after after we create the uh, after the game is running. For example, let's print some things out from the uh, function itself. So maybe the first thing we can say hi. We create this line of code is uh, uh, is to print or showing the high word into the, our game. So if we save and go back to Unity, and you can see in Unity there is a console window. And in the uh, console window, if you don't have a console window, you can press window on upper of your Unity and you can see if you have, if you using the uh, Unity 2017 or the uh, the older one, there is a console button in here. But if you using the 2081, you can check there is a, some difference layout, and you can see in general there is a console, and you can click. And when you see the console, you can press play in Unity. So there is no, there is not at all printing in Unity because when we create the Unity uh, class and we have some void start method and we creating debug.log.high, we don't actually put the script itself to our game. To, to put the script to our project, we need to attach it somewhere else, uh, somewhere, some random place in our scene project. So for example, we have main camera and we can drag and drop the running function into the camera itself. Or you can drag and drop to the uh, inspector and you can see a learning function is add from Unity and we can once again, see the console and press play. And now our high is printed out. So, a method, this method of start is called by Unity because this is a special method. This, uh, this method is called once when we play the game or we play our games. And then the next, the next things that we need to create is uh, the, uh, the method itself. So, for example, we, create, we want to create the robot like hi. But if you populate or you fill some like this more and more, it's become cluttering. It's become so much in our first method, in start method. And if we play, press play again, oha, there is so much high printing out on here. Actually, there is an there is egg high, and it is cluttering our project. So we can create a custom one, the custom function. For example, we can create a void, say hi. And if you see more closely, the, the, uh, the shape of the function itself is the same. If you see there is a void start function, void update function, and our self made void say hi function, they have void they have method name and then uh, open and close back, uh, bracket and curly bracket. They all the same. So if we put or replace this one is into our project, we can call our, met, uh, our function from the start button. You can see when I type say, 
it's already in there so we can just type it something like this and we can save it and what's happened is the same just like we create the debug.log from the start function yes it's printing out the high take time as well the last thing that I need to explain about the function is the structure of the function itself so if you see we have some part of the function that uh, difference or maybe uh, that build the, the method or the function itself the first one is called the return value for it is a return value that the method wants to return about the void itself is defined just like nothing so we don't pass or we don't return anything to the caller and then we have a name of the method and then we have a parameter or parameter list so for example if uh, on this function say hi function we have a written value of void nothing we have a name of the method say hi and we have no parameter defined by open bracket and close bracket if uh, for example we we want to have a function to calculate or calculate to number for example if on the start i want to create a variable first for example integer maybe for example uh, uh, some random name number equals five so we have a number of five and we want to print that out and multiply it by two if we save on it and we straight back to unity and maybe we can delete this line of calling say hi method and we can play press play on the unity we can see that our number which is 5 is is calculated to times 2 which is to it's a 10 now but what if we want to calculate some random number or any number somewhere else if you want maybe this is only one number Oh, I'm sorry. I I hard code I hard code type five instead of random number, but the result is the state still the same. Yeah, it is still printing the pen. But for example, if I want to create uh, maybe some other number, something like but maybe we have some another random number yes. for example um, seven yeah i like seven another random seven times for example three and let's say when we when we play our uh, play button uh, you can see our calculation is showing up and there is two of them 10 and 5 and 7 times 2 and 3 but there is a better way to do that and it is using a function for example we can create a function which we will use the uh, <laughs> structure on it 
a return so value, the a name of the method, and parameter list. We can type since we want our function to returning something, and we just this is a number. We can pass an integer, and we can type the name maybe uh, multiply, multiply by, and we need to have an input from uh, for our function to its to works. So the input parameter should be a, for example, or number one, and the multiplier. Multiplier. And we can make a return value of number one. Multiply by multiplier. So we don't need to manually times this times that just like we did earlier. We can only just pass the uh, method by using the method name in our project. So we can say uh, you can say multiply by. You can see the function is showing up and. The number that we need to multiply, for example, random number, and we can pass in the multiplier. We can, we want to multiply the random number by, for example, four on it. And on this one below, we can create multiply again by the uh, another random number to, for example, maybe we want to multiply it by ten. And when we press save and try to run it into Unity, can play it first and play. We have our result. You can see 20 is a 5 times by 4 and 70 is another random number which is 7 times 10. So the function is like this. Function is a step or the structure that we need to follow is return value, the name of the method, and parameter list. Okay. Oops. The next one that we need to learn about is syntax. Syntax in a programming language is just like a, maybe uh, some convention or some rules that we need to type on it. Just like, for example, we uh, from from the start of this training, we we learn about debug.log, which is the function to printing or showing up some information in our games in Unity. This one is following the syntax using dot in, in, in there. So maybe so the syntax is just like you typing uh, or maybe you're creating an uh, yeah, um, address, for example. Just like maybe you want to send some letter. Some letter is like you, you want to, for example, you have some friend, uh, John, maybe. John, John is uh, living in uh, some country in U. Uh, what can we say in U.S. for example? Maybe just like in California, for example. In U.S., so we created California and U.S. step by step, right? We don't we don't use it like California, U.S. No. We type it one by one from from the from the uh, specific one to a general one. The scripting in C sharp and or in general in Unity is the same. If you want to lock something, logging. If you want to lock something, you uh, this class is have a member from class another class called debug. So if you want to print things, your information in Unity using log function, you need to call this first. So we type debug, and when we press 
dot you can see there is a lot of function already defined from you uh, from unity which we can use and for example uh, and the uh, one of them is log just like typing us dot oh us maybe dot california and maybe the the next one is your house address or something like this the syntax is just like that we will learn about syntax uh, more after maybe this uh, later on on next chapter of our training session and but for now you uh, the things that you need to know is uh, syntax is just like uh, writing convention uh, to create our script and then we start to if statement sometimes in your code you want to uh, differentiate the uh, the flow of your programming for example let's go, uh, get back from our first things about age maybe let's create an, another script that so we have another uh, one topics per script making this course more manageable so we want to learn if statement let's create a script for that so for example we want to create uh, for example like we want to print something out based on our age or based some on some somebody age for example we want to create we have an age like maybe 16 and I want to know that if uh, someone age 16 to want to create an ID card for example it is if it's he, he is eligible or not so I want to create I want to printing this something out maybe like you are old enough to have an ID card I want to print something like this if the age is more than let's say 17 and I want to print like this you are not old enough to have an ID card if the age is below 17 how to do that uh, in C-Shop and Unity it is uh, uh, actually for programming in general we have a syntax or you can say a feature called if statement if statement is just like a conditional checking so if we want to check something if it's true or not we need this if statement so for our case for now it's like I want to print this line of code if our age is more than 17 and we want to print this one if our age is below 17 so we can type like if age and we can have this symbol of h bracket closed s bracket is uh, is more than so if i type something like this h is more than 16 uh, 17 for example if our age is more than 17 we we print these things out and we ha we need to have a bracket for that and or else we print these things out so if we have some age for example 16 it should print this something out instead of the you are old enough to have an ID card because our age is 16 and the requirement for having an ID card is more than 17 for example let's save this script up and oh, I'm sorry I forgot to 
pause or stop the Unity, and we can play it. Oh, I, I forgot to do that. Because we have another script, we can remove the old script first, learning function, and we replace it on learning if statement on it. And when we press play, ah, Unity printing uh, uh, printing the information that you are not old enough to have an ID card. And that's right, because our age is 16. But if we have some age like 20, we change that and we save and we play again in Unity. Oof. We have some information, different information, and it says you are old enough to have an ID card. So this is the simplest form of if statement. There is some more complex if statement, just like, for example, if nested if statement, if else if statement, but we will learn that one by one. The first form of if statement is the simplest one, is like this. You need to have if keyword following that by open brackets and then the arguments or something that we need to check on. A comparing operators or comparing symbol, for example, this one is more than, if you want to have uh, a, a below than or less than, we can change it to this symbol. And if you want to have some, maybe for example, the same function, if I only want to print this out when the age is equal to 17, we have a equals symbol. The equal symbol is double equals in C sharp. So the structure of if statement is if keyword following by the open bracket and something we want to check and then we want to compare compare symbols and then uh, something we want to check as well and open bracket so in this case the if keyword is if of course if and something we want to check is age and the compare symbol that we use previously is more than some value that something we want to check it all about is 17 for example this is a simple form of if statement we have another if statement for example uh, if else if statement if else if statement is just like if but we have some more condition for example just like this if h for example is more than 40 for example you want to check it like debug the blog. maybe you, you want to show some information like you are maybe you can say yeah you are above above 40 and if we follow the pattern from the our previous if statement we have something like this, right? Debug dot log like you are below forty. But what if we want to, for example, have some some condition that we need to check about more? So enter the else if. This is the simple one, and we want to have some, for example another condition. We can type another if after the else and we have something like other checking method. For example, 
if h is more than 40 you want to show you are above 40 and maybe and else if your age is equal to 40 yeah, or anything else you are something else debug.log you are below 40 and the middle one is you are 40 something like this so this is the more complex one of if statement so if the uh, the previous one we only check the if statement to more than some value and if it's not true we will go to this block but this if statement we have three blocks the first one if the if statement if the h is more than 40 the second one is if the h is re is equal 40 and then the last one if it's the if it's those two statement is not true and we will go to the next block the you are below 40 let's maybe try it for example and we can maybe delete this one up oh. and maybe we can pass right now is 48 and then we can go back to unity and press play and we can see unity will showing that you are above 40 but we if we want to change the h to 40 you are 40 and if we change again below 40 for example 30 you are below 40 so like this one this if statement give us more control that uh, we want to move our programming to what 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 step for example something like this and then after if statement i want to tell about the loops uh, the, uh, loops is like we want to create a repetitive piece of code for example just like we did previously on high if you remember we we create this line of loop again and again and again this one for example have one two three four five six seven h we have a high and unity of course printing it out for us eight time but what if we want to print these things up maybe more than eight if that is the case we want to have some loops in our program for example let's copy the uh, method from previous one and we create another script we create it on c-sharp script again and name our script is learning loop and we can paste our code below it and just like our first uh, task about variable we can call it say hi from here and we can back to unity and once again we can close the uh, learning if statement we can remove the component and we can add our learning curve on it and we can press play just like we expect we have a high in the in the uh, console and now we want to learn about the loops for example we want to print high maybe a hundred or maybe a thousand times if we do the manual way we can of course we can but our script will be something like this that 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 that, that. and more 
more and more and more. And this is not good. The first thing that we comes in mind, if we want to do some things repetitively, we will use the loops. The first loop that we, uh, that we will cover is for loops. For loops is something like this. For integer i, for example, for index i is less than, for example, 10 or some random number and i plus plus. This is a basic uh, structure for for loops and this containing i I'm sorry if i equals 0 but this is containing a for key code a keyword sorry following by open bracket and an optional integer initialization or any other types that we can add on integer variable name followed by semicolon and some condition just like in if you can use i for example in this one is equal or below some or less than something some value and another semicolon and we have some incremental or adding this index for now so this one when we create the for loops this example will create the i is 0 and when i is less than 10 the i will be will get added by one for each this block will call for example if we want to call the say hi method, which is we'll print the hi, we will, we can call it from here and say say hi. And because we start from zero and we start by adding and adding the i after we finish this line of code until the i is more or equals than ten. This means this say hi method will be called 10 times. Let's see, save. And we can press play in Unity. And you can see hi is called 10 times. You can see on this console 10. And maybe you want to go crazy and maybe you want to print a thousand of high, you can change this conditional value to some random number that you want to input in on. And you can see you need to have a thousand of high on it. You can see there's a lot of high. High to a thousand. You can see it's a 999 plus console. So that is the for keyword and for repetitive error some loops, one of the loops that we want to cover about. By the way, if you want to type or ask something, you can chat me on the chat box. So if you maybe for example getting left behind or something like that, you can you can you can tell me that I need to maybe slow down or maybe go faster. Please feel free. I'm sorry, I want to take some break, it's drinking my water. Ah, it's getting cold in here. Okay. Should we continue? Okay, after this is for loops. The next loops that I want to talk about is for a while loops. I'm sorry. While loops is, the syntax is something like this, while something and some curly bracket. A while and something that we need to verify that its value is true or not. For example, let's create a variable i, like 
this one. Integer i equals, for example, 10. And we can see and we can type on our while loops like while i is more than 0. If i is more than 0, this line of this block of code will run again and again until the i is less or equals the zero. For example, we want to say hi again. I want to say again. And we can do something like this. But in while loops, if the condition is true the, and remains true, this will go and go infinitely. So we need to, to manually control the program flow. For example, the i is like we need to decrement or the value of i by one for each step of while loops so if we do something like this i will get more or less and less to from 10 9 8 and so on and our say hi will be called not infinitely so if we back to unity and press play again you can see the high oh sorry oh it's still it's still running the for loops so i forget to exclude that and when we save it and back to unity we will see the high is called again by 10 that is while loops for now so the difference from while and for while is like we uh, we check the uh, the uh, conditional in here and we will run this piece of code on here and we need to control it manually okay That is for now about for the loops. We will cover more loops as we progress later on, and but for now it is just enough for us. Now we want to dive into more interesting part of this uh, training. A scope and access modifier. What is a scope and access modifier? It's like we were uh, in programming language each class that or each script that we create need to uh, interact that for, to another script just like a human we want to interact to our friends our family and other human as well so the script is also do like a person or like a, a human they interact to each other just like a gear and your bike to perform some tasks that need to be done. The uh, scope and access modifier prevent or limit this kind of data flow that each class have. So not only not everything that that class have is accessible through the other class. For example, in real life, Maybe some person want to uh, want to ask their age, for example, and maybe they want to share the age, and just like in real world. And for example, if another person want to ask some private issues or private matters, for example, maybe some um, mobile number, uh, it is a private stuff that may, that some for people that don't want to share it about to another people. Just like that, in script is also have some things like that. For this, let's create uh, another script called learnings scope. Let's open our script. And for scope or access modifier, in C sharp we have 
uh, three common access modifier, which is a public or I'm sorry, public or private and protected. Simple, yeah. What is what does it means? So it means that this information, this age, for example, we have age 17, everybody can have the access or have the data on it. So, for example, another class or another person who, uh, who want to know about our age, they can because our access modifier is defined by public. Public means everybody is uh, capable to ask or, or get the data. A private, on the other hand, is not open. It's closed from other to see. This mobile number variable is uh, defined or can be used is only in this class itself. And protected is the more ex uh, it's more advanced. And protected is just like uh, private, but it is also can be accessed by a child or or the or the parent of this class and we will learn about that in on later on on this more advanced c sharp or scripting workshop so what is the difference in unity for example from the first time we define a variable without the uh, access modifier for example like integer h equals 17 just like we see. In, in C Sharp, if we don't define the uh, access modifier, the default value of the, of the uh, access modifier is private. So if we type int h, it's just like we type a private int h17. Something that's really matter on that, we can see on the uh, editor yeah. for example in the learning scope uh -huh. we can remove our, our learning loop and we drag and drop the learning scope we can see our script in it and if we want to change the uh, access modifier for example to public for example everybody in the uh, uh, every class or everybody can access this edge and we can back to unity and there is something different. When we define the access of variable to public, Unity will expose this variable into the Unity editor. So we can see and we can change the data on it freely. We can see check on 19, we can check it on 20, and we can change it to any value that we want to. And if we for example, print this out, debug.log of h. Even in our script, is it is called 17, or it's defined 17. And it is defined 20 in Unity Editor. When we press, the value will follow up the, the uh, h of 20, following the Unity Editor value. So this is the public access modifier of the uh, variable. The access modifier is also can be located on the uh, class on the class scope. For example, if you see from the first times we create a function, every function or every class that Unity generate us is public. Public learn, public function public if statement, public loops, and public learning scope. Why? Because to work, every class needs to expose themselves to another class. Something like that. So, 
the difference between public and private in Unity Editor is like that. If we have something like this, for example, in private type of access scope, in Unity Editor we don't we won't see the variable. For now, the access modifier and the scope of that is you need uh, that you need to know is that. And the uh, public or access modifier is just not on. Uh, it's not only for the uh, variable and class. The the function or the method that we create last times is also can be modified by that keyword. For example, like multiply by say hi. If you just like a variable. If we don't define the uh, the access modifier, the default value is private. So this one is the same. And if we want to call the say hi, if you if you want to call any method or any function from other function other script, we need to change it to public. Just like that. So, for example, just like for fun sake, so maybe we can define like learning function. We have a say hi on it, learning function. And we, if we call the learning function and pressing, I'm sorry, and press learning function. And pressing dot, you can see say hi on it, but you won't see the multiply by because multiply by is a private project, uh, private function. If we change it to public, you will see the multiply by, and if we refer it to private again you will not see the multiplier. And that is for start and access modifier. The next one that we need to discuss is start and update, a method that comes uh, defaultly from Unity. So let's switch the gear and do some more, uh, what can you say, more graphically. Now it is time and let's create another script. It's called maybe moving object. Now, if you want to see, let's open the moving object first. If you see the uh, moving object class that, uh, that Unity gave it to us, we have start and update method. Just like we learned before, void start is called the first and only one time, only once, when we start the game. So if we have some something in mind, uh, for example, maybe a variable like just like we see, uh, just like we already done. I'm sorry, uh, we won't say we won't do that again because we already have the start function. will call this method or this line of code, but only once. The next one is void update, and if we see, um, yeah, for example, let's print something simple. It's like, hola. If we save and bring it into Unity, and we can remove it again and move it. this one and press play. You can see hola is called once, only once. But if we move this debug of hola and move it to update, 
this will be called every frame on the game or every uh, every frame just like if we press the play button and we can see in the console hola is called every frame that our game is running on and it it will not stop until our game is stopped when if we stop the game it is stopped to calling it uh, call the hola so it is the difference the starts will call the, uh, the this piece of block only once but the void update will be uh, will call the uh, content of the of this function repeatedly each frame and let's learn about some more visual for example just like in unity we can create a simple object for example we want to create some 3d object in unity you can create a 3d object for example so we want to have some cube now we have a cube and we can play around with the cube something like this so in this cube uh, in this example the cube is not moving if we don't touch him so this cube will stay right there and we want to move or we want to move this piece of cube to from our script so we can have some reference on it the cube itself is a game object so if we will learn about the variable last times is integer string boolean we have some more type and one of them is game object game objects is any object in unity that you see in unity so a cube is one of the game object as well we can press a, uh, we can type a game object and say maybe my cube and since we want to access the game object more freedomly in unity we change the access modifier into a public one and when we press play or we save and we see our project you see my cube is now on this one and my cube is none let's drag and drop the cube from sample screen and going into our project and immediately my cube is populated by cube right now and we can start to moving some cube if we want to for example move this my cube to the right we can create that by using my cube dot transform dot translate we can have this translate and we can factor3 factor3 dot right and we can press the semicolon and we save and we can see the play button as you can see this cube is moving um, but only once and we don't see that that much for example we we will want to move the cube to zero coordinates so we can see our cube in here and when we press play the cube is moving on to the right as we see the position is changed from zero to one And, we, and if we want to move this kind, this piece of code to update function, this line will be called each frame. So our cube will move on to the right, to the right, to the right, until we stop the game. Let's see in it in action, shall we? And when we press play, it's moving so fast. And it's gone. And you can see uh, the cube is moving in an incredible speed. 
and you can see if you go back to scene and right click the cube uh, and cube is moving so fast because we translate or we move the script to the right each frame of the each uh, by one each frame so for example we want to make it more slower we can times it or we can multiply the variable oh sorry and we we can have some custom value of factor 3 factor 3 is just like a positional variable you can see and then it has three value x y and z since we want to move it to the right we have to input the x of positive value for example like maybe 0 0.01 f and we don't want to move it to up so we pass 0 and we don't want to move forward either so we pass 0 and we can save and we can go back to unity and we can press play and you can see this little cube is moving to the right each frame slowly and as you can see in the uh, inspector that is for void start and void update difference and the next one is awake and fix update unity have uh, several special method that we don't need to call to them to be activated just like if we want to for example like want to call the say hi like our previous uh, project we need to explicitly say uh, type say hi right but for a special method or special function in unity just like start and update we don't need to explicitly call them the unity itself is already called them from within the unity engine itself so yeah we don't we don't need to call it explicitly and the most common method that we will stumble upon in unity other than start and update is awake and fix update you can see if we create a function like void and we press space and we press awake you can see there is a lot of special function that unity provide us to and the for example is awake and the other one is like fixed update yeah so awake is called by unity just like start it is uh, it is called only once it's uh, it's uh, once we run the game the start and awake will be called once but the time of unity calling them is a little bit different awake is called more uh, f um, uh, for the first one rather than start so if we have void start and, fo and void update in our script the content of awake function will be called first and then the start one for example let's create a simple text example like awake and the void start we can say start and when we save and go back to unity and press a play You can see awake is called first and then start is next. The next thing that uh, differentiate the awake and start is we have a moving object script, right? And this on the left of moving script, there is a checkbox indicating that the script is active or not.
for example, if we delete all of the uh, line of code and we will give only a void update method running on and we press save and we go back to Unity and we press play, we can see the object is moving. But when I disable or uncheck, the cube is stopped to move. And we, if we check again, the box continue to move. What happened? Because when I check this script or moving object script, the script become active. And if I check and I, I uncheck, the script become inactive. And the difference is awake is will be called uh, even even the uh, script is not active. So if I have awake and start, if let's say debug.log again, I press it like this, I type it on start like oops debug.log start like this. If I come back to Unity and I uncheck the script and press play, the awake will be called even if the script is not active. And when we press or we check the project or uh, I'm sorry, uh, the moving object script, the start will be called and after we stop we activate again yeah, the script will not call it because the start and awake will be called only once so that is the difference awake will be called either if the pro, uh, if the uh, moving object script is active or not but start only uh, only will be called when the uh, moving object script is active. The next thing is fixed update. Just like the name show, there is there is must be some this some similarity between update and fixed update, right? Because two of them is called update. And if you think something like that, you're right. Because update and fixed update will be called repeatedly. But this method of fixed update and update will be called uh, on different time frame. Uh, for example, update is called between frame. So if our game is, for example, 60 FPS or frame per second, this method will be called 60 times. And if our game is maybe, for example, is so heavy and maybe only run 10 frames per second, the up void update will be called 10 per second. So the times of this, uh, this function to be called each second is relative. It's changed. But in fixed update, no matter how much, how hard, uh, how heavy, or how light your game, how the fixed update will be called in uh, relatively same time step. Let's see it in action. If we create, now uh, let's delete the awake, uh, the awake and start and void update. Let's we delete that line and replace it on the button lock update. And we call it fixed update. After, we st uh, after that, we go back to Unity and don't forget to enable this moving script and we can press play. for some second and we can press stop and we can see the result you can see that fixed update and update is called but in a different 
in a really, really different timestamp. You can see the first one is maybe fix update, update, fix update, update, fix update, but once you see fix update is called more and then update again is called fix update is called something like this. Because this is this fix update is called the same times. The settings is uh, in you can see in project setting and physics. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, maybe no, it's too uh, it's too advanced for to, for me to show you like this. Maybe just like this. We can call it update, and we will try to see the timestamp on it. You can see time the time. It is this is to show the the time current time in our games, and we can see this on time the time. And when we press play, you can see our time is starting from zero to each one. And after that, you can see the fixed time is going to be called on 0 0.02 seconds. And update is called on 0. 0 to second as well and after that fixed update is called on each 0 0.02 time step you can see 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.02 0 0.04 and 6 and 8 and now on but in the update you can see the update is skipping from 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 12. It is because update is called relatively from the uh, frame per second perspective instead of the uh, fixed time step like fixed update just like the name uh, say it's update within a fixed time 0 0.08, 0 0.1, 0 0.012, 0 0.14, 16 and so on but updates you can see it's randomly called depends on, on the uh, frame rate of your games and more heavy uh, your game is and the less the update will be called yeah and then the the next one is enabling and disabling the component so in unity each game object that you create in the uh, Unity itself contains or contains one or more component. You can see our script is also called component because it is attached to the uh, game object itself. Like for example, we have a main camera. We have a main camera, and ca the main camera have a transform component. We have a camera component, audio listener component, and moving object script component. And when the previous, uh, on the previous one, we enable and disable a component, actually we can do that the same on the script. So for example, on the moving object, I we want to enable or disable the uh, script when we press button uh, some button for example just like we on the real on the on the game on the real game right so just like we already learned from this or today's training we want to listen or we want to know uh, when our player or ourselves is pressing some button and to know each frame and we want to know continuously if we press a button or not so our project or our script is will be uh, located on the uh, update function instead of start or awake and to to get uh, or to know whether our player or ourselves pressing a button 
we have some input class dot get key and get key means that if we press something this method will return a boolean value it is true or not we pressing that key for example we want to know that if we press Press a space key or not. We will type input dot get key and open bracket and key code without space. This method, uh, this function get key function will return a value or if true. If we press the space bar, it, it will return true. But if we don't press a space bar this will return a false let's print it out and we can delete this one and we can go back to unity and you can see in the console I press play and you can see it is printing false because I don't press my spacebar just yet but as soon as I press a spacebar it is called true and if I release the spacebar it becomes false, false as again and our and our objective now is We want to our game to move the cube to the left or, or to the right when our player is pressing the spacebar. But if we if our our player is not pressing the the spacebar, we stop it from the moving. Let's break down. we want to press uh, we want to move the cube we want to move the cube if we press spacebar and we want to move the cube each frame From the lesson that we already have in this training, we need something that we that we want to move on. It is a cube, and right now we have a cube, and we want to move the cube if we press a spacebar. So now we know that this piece of code will be returning true if we press a space bar if we press a press bar and return false if we don't and if we and we want to move the cube each frame which is we will use the update function each frame when we press a space bar so if you guess we will using if statement you are right because we want this piece of code to be running if some condition is true. So we wrap our method of input.getKey, space within the if statement, and we type on the uh, curly brackets. So this line only will be called when a player press spacebar if a player don't play or maybe don't press a spacebar this kind uh, this line is will be skipped for this uh, lecture or for this workshop it is enough for that so this line will only be called when press spacebar is Cool. and how to 
move it or, or how to move the kind of cube. We can just do like something like this, just like we use on the later one. My cube dot transform dot translate. And we can pass the vector tree and just like that, one by one, zero, f, zero, and zero. Once we press play, we save, and when we press play, the cube will literally do nothing because I don't press a space bar yet. But once I press the space bar, the cube is moving and immediately when I release the space bar the cube is stop moving and it is so if that kind of behavior is that we had in unity our code is working perfectly we want to execute this line of code only if our space bar is pressed Another way to achieve this kind of behavior, we can move it, this line of code, in here. And when we save, what will happen? The cube will run and moving to the right infinitely until we stop the game and when we press space it will do nothing because the uh, line is outside of the if statement right something like that now learn uh, now let's learn about enable and disable components For example, let's delete this piece of code or maybe everything on it. So we have some clear space and we can press play again. You can see a cube or is only a game object with some component on it. You can see there is so much of checkbox list on it. Do we always, oh, I'm sorry, oh, let's talk about like the, 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 the. Do we always have to put double backslash? Oh, double backslash from Farel Ahmad, SMA, and Su, Surabaya. Okay, you, let's go back like this. This one, you want to ask about, uh, uh, do we always have to put this kind of uh, double, cro uh, double, double slash? It is in the, uh, in the uh, programming language, uh, most of programming language, uh, C-sharp is included. If we want to, this, uh, this, this line of code will be run running on your machine right on your PC on your PC this public game object my cube this void update will be called but if you want to uh, comment or commenting the script you can use a uh, double backslash the double the, uh, the uh, text that you start using the double black stress is called a comment. So the, the compiler or the computer will ignore this kind of block. Just like if you want to, for example, this my cube, let's we press, yeah, let's press play. This cube is running, right? So if we want that to be not running or not executing uh, not get executed from the PC we can just add the uh, double black slash on it and you can see the color is changed to some somewhat somewhat green instead of more color for just like that 
It is because our PC, our computer ignore this piece of code. So our code is become inactive. And when we press play, this cube will do nothing. So the reason I have to type double back, uh, double double slash before I create or uh, I type in that some instruction outside of the scripting uh, just because I don't want that my text on here get executed by the computer uh, because we will getting run into an error. I hope that answer uh, that answered some quick ex uh, quick question from Farel Ahmad. And uh, what can where um, where else again? <laughs> I forget. Ah, yeah, about enabling and disabling. And cube. Let let's see about the cube itself. A cube is just a game object that have some much component on it. You can see a cube have a transform component on it, a cube component on it, mesh renderer, and box collider. A mesh renderer component is responsible to showing up a cube, to show up the cube for us. For example, if I disable this component, the cube is gone. But it's not gone for all. It's not gone for good. If I enable this this mesh renderer, it becomes appear again to us because it's render mesh renderer literally render or drawing the cube for us to us to be seen. So with that with that knowledge in mind, let's disable or enable the cube within our script. First thing first, we want to we want to show cube when, for example, our player hold the uh, space bar again and hide it when our player release the space bar. So we knew from the previous uh, section that this this piece of code will be called, will be executed when a player press a spacebar, and we can add the else statement. So this line only will be called when a player press spacebar, and this line only will be called when a player not pressing a spacebar. So we have two blocks on it and we know that we want to show the cube when our player holds the spacebar and hide it when our player releases the spacebar. To access this cube, so in our script, we have a reference of variable of my cube, which is game object, right? And if we want to get the mesh render component, we have some function. Unity give us a function called a get component. So just like we know, my cube is a game object, and we want to access its mesh render. So dot get component and we need to define what kind of component that we want to get, which is a mesh render. We have so we need to define it using uh, edge bracket and we want to access mesh render. The syntax is like this, and we want to 
disable this mess renderer when we don't press a spacebar and re-enable it when we press a spacebar. So we can see mess renderer have a variable called enable and enabled once again is a boolean so we can go like this and we want to enable it when we press spacebar which is we will give it a true value on enable boolean variable and we need just to copy it and paste it to the uh, else block statement and enable it and set it to false and we, if we save it and go back to Unity, when we press save or and when we press play, you can see our cube is gone because we don't press space yet. But once we press a space bar, it's become visible again. And immediately when I release the space bar, it become disabled again and you can see visually on the uh, inspector of cube you can see a mesh render is now disabled and when I press spacebar and hold it it's become active and once I release it it's become inactive and we can spam it all the time And that is how we enable or disable a component within a game object of cube. So let's do some quick recap that about our agenda and our topics that we already defined today. It's quite a lot. <laughs> so we learn about IDE, Visual Studio Introduction. Introduction, we, know, we knew that to create a code in, within Unity, we need to have Microsoft Visual Studio. We already learned about variables, that it's a variable is like a bucket to contain our data, like age, name, and even game object. A function is as well, we already did some quick press course about function, which is, is function is just like a step to do some more complex step or something to do. And syntax is just like a convention, like we, when we creating a email address or maybe a physical address. And if statement is how ask to, uh, how we control the programming flow just like we already learned about age and then the latest one and if we press a button or key or not and then a loops function or just like we already learned about repetitively doing some script repetitively and we already learn about scope and access modifi modifier as well so we don't have to going back to script our script again back and forth just to change the age and in this example we can just drag and drop the queue within the unity editor and we also learn about the difference about start and update awake and fix update and the last one is enable and disable components Okay, guys, uh, if you want to learn or do some further research, I already give a link on it. You can, you can just follow the link if you want to install the Unity. There is, this is the address you will want to type on in your browser. And the next one is uh, some more advanced software that we will need to use on our next uh, training session. And then 
for you guys who, who want to learn more about Unity and uh, Unity features, you need you you will need to go to unity3d.com slash learn and slash tutorials. Uh, there was uh, there were already much more tutorial regarding any topics that you want to learn. If you want to learn about audio in Unity or maybe you want to learn about video, about 3D, please feel free to op open the tutorial links on this uh, presentation. And for localized content maybe, if you want to learn about Unity using Bahasa, you can as well go into YouTube and there is so much tutorial on it using some localized content language. Okay, uh, maybe that it's for today. Thank you guys. If you want to have some question and answer, please feel free to ask for me or chat on the chat box. Yes, we already have several questions in the Q&A chat column. We got a several from um, Vocational High School 6 Jakarta. So they 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 asked if if direct uh, if direct a scene, what's the script like? I, I I don't know what what that means. If direct a scene, what's the script if like? Direct a scene. I I, oh, I don't know what 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 they mean by direct directing a scene. Uh, okay, uh, maybe uh, if I want, uh, if I want to rephrase the the uh, question, maybe he want to change a scene. But how to change a scene? Ah, right? I see. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because direct a scene. Yes. So hey. actually, uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, uh, this is not uh, the scope because our uh, this is the it, it, basic it is not, Yes, it is not the scope. Just just saying that you you will answer it in the next session. That will be yes. will be with the finest. Of course. So mm. uh, if you want to learn about how to direct or how to move around scene yeah. in Unity, uh, please f feel free to join us on the next lecture uh, mm. on the on the uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, we, uh, I will explain more detail and more advanced Unity feature on it. Yes, that's it. And they asked again about deformer in Unity. So we don't, we are not explaining anything about deformer, right? Yes. Yes. Deform. Deform. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Mm. <laughs> okay. So uh, for you guys, if you. Will if you want to ask a more advanced topic uh, or outside of today basic scripting in unity you can feel free to contact me on the uh, email on the this one aditya.pratama2910 at gmail.com feel free to ask uh, to me uh, on that email address or if you want to hang out with me uh, on Facebook maybe or maybe on Twitter or LinkedIn you can have the link in of my profile link in below and for my Facebook and Twitter just search my name Anjar Aditya Pratama yes and don't forget to introduce yourself first please oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it seems that we don't have any questions okay yeah okay got a questions does our vr project need to be sell now you don't have yet yes so you, you need to concentrating on making a vr application just just that you, you don't don't have to think about a sell, selling factor yeah we got a questions. Do we always have to put slash? Yeah, double uh, slash. So double slash. Yeah. From uh, Farel Ahmad. Uh, from Farel. Uh, thank you, Farel Ahmad uh, from SMAN2 Surabaya. To asking the, do we always have to put double slash? Just like uh, we see on our lecture. I put a lot of double backslash uh, block in it, right? 
so uh, I just explain it to them and I will re-explain it again the double slash means it's a comment not a quote so if you if you want to put some detailed information in your project in your script use the double backslash just like for example like this one a learning function for example you have some function in here multiply by and if you want to re-explain or or explain more details maybe for your next uh, programmer to come along you can use a double backslash and you can see this function is for multiplying two variables and if the context of question uh, do we always have to put backslash if you want to create a comment yes you always have to put a backslash and but if you don't want to comment anything yeah you don't need to put a double backslash okay i hope that answer the question and then is this streaming gonna be uploaded it's already a reply by anji and how do we make a parabola movement? Yeah, actually we will learn about making some advanced movement. It's not just like moving uh, normally to right or left. We will learn about parabola movement as well in the next sec uh, lecture. Thank you, Denisa Ili Rahmawati and Farel Ahmad. If you have some question, uh, please feel free to chat My, uh, on the chat box. We have five minutes, I think. Does Milia Lab beta version has been released? Uh, okay, this is the the uh, question regarding Milia Lab uh, last uh, last last section. And if you will, if you mean Milia Lab beta version, uh, Milia is uh, uh, have two uh, two version, right? Uh, two or maybe two sides of Milia Lab. The, the first one is Milia Lab Editor and Milia Lab Viewer. For Milia Lab Viewer, you can download it on the Play Store. Just search Milia, M-I-L-L-E-A, and you can find uh, that uh, application, Milia Viewer, on the Play Store if your phone is capable to run it. To run it. The minimal is KitKat and has a gyroscope sensor. For the Milia Lab creator, uh, we will share the links uh, once it's, it's ready. Thank you, SNK Emmanuel. Yeah, you're welcome. So, do you still get any questions, guys?
Okay, so as for a reminder, uh, we are already record the session, so you can find the link in the Telegram group. Maybe it will be post the link there by Mr. Purnomo, or you can take a look at the Simeo Creative Camp website under the virtual reality workshops. Anyway, if you don't have any questions, so that's it for today, I think. So, yeah, we'll meet again at the Wednesday for the fifth sessions. <clears throat> so, thank you guys for attending the sessions and see you again in the Wednesday. Thank you, Mr. Artit. Okay, thank you so much, uh, yes. everyone, for so, so having me in Harald. Yes, I wish you have a great day, guys. See ya. See ya. Thank you. Thank you.